So, I just got an email and something is waiting for us at the store, so we're on our way to Sportsman Warehouse and pick it up. Alright, so I just got it there. Warehouse. I'm gonna go inside and I am going to go pick up a package and we'll see you soon. Alright, so we just got home. Well, okay, I got home a couple of days ago, but we're actually now going to take a look at what's inside this box. So as many of you know that I'm a huge fan of Six Arc, and so far um, we've done a number of semi-auto six semi-auto AR-15 based Six Arc guns, um, and there's definitely a bunch of potential. But that obviously leads to the question: Well, how good is it in a bolt gun? So I do actually have a couple of six arc bolt gun barrels. However, they are not on those guns yet. Uh, but they're also, the, those barrels cost more than what I paid for this gun. So I want to take a look at, okay, what can you get if you wanted a six arc firearm um, on a budget from a factory? So right now, uh, you're going to have a couple of options. And really, it's three, and all of them come from Savage. Uh, when 6ARC was launched, you did have companies such as Mossberg and Howa and CZ come out and say, hey, we're going to do 6ARC guns. Unfortunately, we've seen nothing from Mossberg. They've been pushing it back and back. Uh, CZ, while well, we have the CZ600 snafu, CZ was planning on doing 6ARC within the older 527 mini action, uh, but then they got rid of everything and they did the CZ600, and there's absolutely zero signs of 6ARC in the CZ600. In fact, we haven't seen mini actions for those yet, and while well, we don't even have a 6.5 Grendel option in the CZ600, but the gun is actually pretty interesting, and I've done a couple of videos on the CZ600, and you can watch those linked above. Um, the closest one that there might actually even be a couple out there is the Howa 1500 Mini Action, and they weren't even complete guns. What they were were barreled actions that some people were able to pick up, and I guess they only did a run of two of them, and they were able to put them in their own guns, and they have been out there. However, um, Howard does have three or four 1,500-based actions firearms, but I've been bugging my dealers, and I haven't gotten a response. I've reached out to Howa. Uh, they haven't really responded, and... Essentially, it was nowhere to be found. So the only six ARC guns under $2,000 or so that you can find are going to come to us from Savage. Uh, now, there are obviously a couple of bolt gun offerings available. I believe Christensen now also has them as well. However, those are generally going to be at a different price point, And then you have other thoughts and things to consider. So uh, realistically, you have... I would say two, two and a half options. So the first one is you have uh, the Savage Axis in six arc, uh, but the Savage Axis is a Savage Axis. Um, you basically have like, so the Savage Axis is one standard sized actions. And depending on if it's long or short caliber, the bolt itself is going to be a little bit different. Plus the action itself is a little bit rougher. Uh, thinner barrel, I wasn't really completely crazy about it. The one that I was really looking forward to is the Savage 110 Tactical. I didn't even say Tactical or Tactitard. Uh, the 110 Tactical. However, Savage decided to go, with, was it a 16 or an 18-inch barrel, which I think completely defies the point. And the reason why I like the Tactical is because you get a good action, you get a um, heavier contoured barrel, and the stock is okay. It's not like anything crazy. Fortunately, there was a third option. Uh, you can't get it directly from Savage or most dealers. The only place it's available is Sportsman Warehouse, and that's the reason why we went to Sportsman Warehouse. So Sportsman Warehouse, much like Cabela's, they generally, if you're big enough, you can go to a manufacturer and tell them, hey, I want to do my own line of rifles, and they have, and they called it the 110 Switchback. So the 110 switchback is only available to uh, through Sportsman's Warehouse, and guess what? They have one in 6 Arc. So let's take a look at this one and what you get 
and go from there. So much like every other Savage box, it is there. So we have the firearm itself. Let's see. Okay. The bolt. I'm just going to take everything out of here. And do we have anything in here? Nope. All right. So that's the box. So let's take a look. We get a manual with a firearms lock. I guess this is kind of interesting. So there was a couple, there was a channel subscriber who's like, hey, you should do some unboxing videos. I'm like, I've done some in the past, but I'm like, do people actually give a crap? But this is kind of interesting. So we get a lock as required by the US government. Oh, wow, this is really cool. So you get a load chart here from Savage. Um, you get a dope card. This is really cool. Actually, it's not even that. So it has range adjustment and wind. So is it basically like a shot tracker? Yeah, interesting. Okay. Uh, Savage Arms, join the NRA and you get the bullet pen. Savage sticker. And this is the one that they want you to, so it's the one inside. So this would the one go on glass. They want you to put this on your car. Don't, don't be an idiot. There's no quicker way of telling a thief, hey, go break into my car than putting gun stickers on your car. Uh, what is this? So it's a little thing. Is this something for the bolt? I've never used it for a Savage. It's like a little thingy. And for you people in chat, let me know. <laughs> uh, we have a pair of earplugs we get the manual and it's basically going to be the same manual for the, all the 110s, 11s, 14, 114, 16 for all the bolt action rifles, same manual. Uh, we are going to get the bolt which we're gonna put into the rifle. We get a magazine. Okay, so, okay, we'll talk, and we get a set of spacers and we have the firearm itself. So, Let's, let's take out the bolt. And here, we have the firearm. Okay. So this is the Savage 110 Switchback exclusive to Sportsman Warehouse. So why do I consider this a really good deal? So number one, is unlike a lot of the other exclusive firearms that are out there, this has a heavier contoured barrel. Um, number two, it does come fretted and they even include a radial muzzle brake for you. Um, and basically, I mean, the brake is gonna be decent enough for hunting, but like I said, the most important part is it's already fretted. Um, a lot of the other cheaper guns, so for example, like the exclusive Savage Access guns that Savage does, uh, they're not going to be fretted, so you're basically SOL. You can't put a brake on it. You can't put a mu you can't put a suppressor on it. Can't do anything with it. Um, it comes with a 20 MOA, and so this this is a Weaver rail. Um, I do have a replacement rail uh, that's going to be a 40 MOA rail. Is it 30 or 40 with a, a bubble level that we're going to be replacing in the future? Um, you have the Savage Access, well, you have the Savage 110 Action. Uh, what's interesting, and one of the reasons why I love this, is that it has the handle from the 110 Tactical. That is one of the biggest things that I really like about the 110 Tactical. Now, you can obviously replace this with a fretted handle from Anarchy Outdoors if you want to do something a little bit different. Uh, it does come to us in the stock. Um, actually, well, let's take it one step back. You have the 110 Accu trigger, so it is going to be user adjustable. The trigger itself is actually not going to be bad. Now, then you have the stock. So the stock is in this, it's a polymer stock. Um, it does feel semi-okay, um, and it is going to be finished in the exclusive um, slight camo. It's like a grayer color. Um, feels pretty decent. 
Um, now, the big thing is with this one, and I would say the biggest difference between the Switchback and the 110 Tactical, which is significantly more expensive, is that the 110 Tactical comes with the Accu stock. This just comes with a regular stock. So the Accu stock, you're going to have two things. You're going to have spacers for adjustable length of pull. You have adjustable comb height, and it is going to come with the aluminum bedding block inside. This one does not. Um, what you have is you do have these spacers, which you can use to replace. What I don't like about the stock is the way that Savage kind of goes about it. So you have two holes in here. You got to stick a big Phillips head screwdriver and start unscrewing it. Um, so it's a pain in the butt. It's definitely not going to be adjustable at the range. It's, yeah, it's a little bit weird. Um, but my long-term plans, be the stock doesn't factor into it. And finally, what we have is the 110 Switchbacks does use magazines. So the 110 Tactical is generally going to use AICS pattern magazines. Uh, this does use, I believe, the same magazines that you'd even have in the Access. Um, so it is a short action, but the cool part about it is the magazines are actually not bad. Uh, they do release on the front. You have a metal body, and then you have a polymer base pad. So what they did is, and similar to what you find in other 6.5 Grendel and 6 Arc solutions, is there is a spacer here on the back. Um, so you still have the full-size mag, but there's a spacer in the back that's going to prevent it from um, nose diving or going all the way back. And it does release, and it is not bad. Um, so I suppose, actually, if you wanted to reuse the stock with another 110, uh, you can definitely do that. You would just need a different magazine, and it would just drop right in. Um, fortunately, our long-term plans, we're not going to be using the stock. So the reason why I consider this a really, really solid value, um, especially for 6 arc. So let, I guess let's talk about 6 arc first, and then we'll talk about what makes the switchback a really good value for somebody who's considering a gun to begin with. So... For 6 Arc, the reason why I consider this to be a good value is because this is practically the only gun that I think is going to be in a good configuration. Because the so we established that the 110 and the Axis are currently the only production guns under a thousand bucks, under fifteen hundred dollars that are available in 6 Arc until Hawa and Mossberg and others get their act put together. Um, and this one, I think, is the most appropriate because it's going to give us a normal contour. It's a semi-heavy contour that is and a fretted barrel that's going to be conducive for target shooting. And as far as the value of the switchback, you're getting the vast majority of the features of the Savage 110 Tactical, including a heavier barrel, it's going to be fretted. It even comes with a muzzle brake. Uh, what it's missing is it's not going to be fluted. And the stock, so it's not going to be aluminum bedded. And you're going to be missing the adjustable comb height on there. But for the price, and these are full MSRPs, $549, and that's what I paid. Well, actually, I didn't. I used $549, and then I signed up for the credit card, and I got $50 bucks off. So I paid $499 for this gun. Um, I paid my own money. It was not a uh, demo gun or anything else like that. So we are going to be using it. Um, and we'll do the full detailed review. So and if you're watching this in the future, you'll be able to find it linked above. Uh, but this gun particularly, the 110 Switchback, from Sportsman Warehouse, for somebody who's looking for a six arc chambered gun, this is going to be your best bang for the buck. Um, the expectation, so I haven't shot this yet, obviously it's the first time I actually took it out of the box. Um, the expectation as per reviews is that this gun should definitely be sub MOA um, and possibly be sub half MOA as per what some people say. The other expectation is the much like every other Savage 110, um, it's going to have extraction issues. That's just, I think, what comes with Savages. Uh -huh. um, so we will probably have some issues either with weak extraction, well, weak ejection, 
Um, so we'll work with that and probably talk to some people with that. Um, it is free floated. There is a little bit of flex, but unlike a certain Howa that I recently got, um, I don't think, I mean, based on the lower recoil of six arc, I, there should be enough clearance around this. Um, I recently picked up a Remington 700 SPS tactical, um, and that one came in a um, Howa stock. And that one, people basically report, hey, it's a horrible, horrible accuracy, and I haven't shot it yet. But when you look at it, it's a completely understandable why. The stock is so flimsy, plus there's so little clearance around the barrel that as you're shooting it, the stock hits the barrel and it's going to have an impact on the point of impact. Uh, because the stock is going to be hitting, changing the barrel harmonics before the bullet is even out of the barrel. Um, I don't expect that to be here, um, but uh, what we'll actually do is, so we'll shoot the gun as it is, and then I have some certain upgrades and goodies, and we will certainly upgrade the hell out of this gun, uh, but obviously we'll keep the stock barreled action, uh, but completely different... Um, and we'll probably keep the Accu stock for the Accu trigger for a while, uh, but different bolt handle. I do have a chassis already lined up for this gun. Uh, we'll shoot it with a different brake. We'll shoot it with a suppressor, um, and really see just how much we can squeeze out of this gun um, completely. And then the cool part is we'll be able to compare this to the other plan I had, which was to take a Ruger American in 6.5 Grendel and upgrade that and put a six arc barrel on that gun. So we'll be working with a gunsmith on that. And that's gonna be really, really cool. Um, the coolest part probably I say, because we have the same chassis for both the Savage and the Ruger American, uh, which is the Sharps Heat Seeker chassis. So we'll really be able to have an apples to apples comparison between taking a stock 110 switchback and just slapping it in into a chassis and taking a Ruger American and basically replacing everything with the exception of the action and including a custom barrel for it. And it'll be interesting to see. Um, so I do obviously expect the other gun to shoot better. Um, however, the question is, we'll be able to justify the price. Um, and if you're interested in that Ruger American, I have a complete playlist on everything we've done with it there, and you'll be able to find it linked above as well. Uh, but hopefully, um, you've enjoyed this video, and it gives you everything you need to know about the 110 switchback um, and this 6-arc option. You know exactly what it comes with and the value that you're getting with the gun. Uh, obviously, if you're watching this in the future, we'll have a detailed review video of this gun exactly as it comes, and you'll be able to find it linked above up here. And as always, I appreciate you watching. Keep on squatting, and I'll see you in the next video linked up here. Yay! Look, guys, I, I, like, I did that, and I didn't even like, screw that up completely.